Okay, so for today's craft, I'm gonna be showing you how I'm I made a car trash can. And this is like something I've been working on the last couple of weeks because it's like a real problem in my car. I have two kids, they're both in the back seat and they all have to like exit one way, you know, for auto line. And so I have this one that I bought on Amazon that was, you know, like on one of those top Amazon um, car item videos and so I bought it after watching someone's and this might work if you don't have like kids that are going in and out because when you put this in the car I have to hang it in between the seats like in the I guess the handrest and the cup holder I kind of hang it off of there I'll insert a photo but they keep bumping it side to side and things just keep falling out one is held like this and then they keep bumping it things are always falling out and even though there's a magnetic closure once you have an actual bag in it it doesn't snap and even if you can get it to snap it doesn't hold well and because the plastic is you know covering both sides so we've been using this I've been dealing with it it's super irritating so I thought I would try and make my own with the snappy or the tape measure feature because you know how much I love those bags so this is my first version and yeah it's just extra scrap Star Wars material and so I just had like a hope you can see it's just velcro strapped and then it has a snap there's actual trash in here sorry but yeah it has that same tape measure snap so that it stays closed and I've been testing it out like the last week and it actually works really well. I think the straps on the side made it a little difficult to put the bag on. And as you'll see in my, my latest version that I have something to hold the bag in. And the bags that I bought, you know, cause most stores don't give you bags anymore, plastic bags, right? So I just bought, I don't know, like a thousand pack on Amazon, just these like clear, t-shirt bags i'll link it down below but this is what we use like for trash cans and stuff but it's just the average size trash uh a t-shirt bag i guess i'll just measure it just so you know it's about 14 inches by 11 and a half standard size really so yeah this has been working really well for us and the snap feature really works even though it's like it's not super strong because it is really long it's enough to keep it closed and to keep the trash in so even when they walk past it and then kick it things don't fall out like the other one so that was my first version and then this is my second and i just went to fabric mart and i bought like which is like this discount fabric store in hawaii and just bought like this cheaper or i'm gonna say cheap but it was on the remnants rack i guess so it was only five dollars for a yard and it's kind of this like really thick um what do you call it? like upholstery kind of material i want to say it's cotton and polyester like slightly water resistant feeling or waxy maybe it's waxy canvas i'm not sure it didn't have it it, it was on the roll so it didn't say um what it was but this one I made nice and it's lined on the inside and then I put the straps over here instead of on the side so that you can put the bag and then I put the buttons or hold the side so you would just get a clean one stick it in fold it over and then I found if you wrap it around twice it holds it really well because just having the button doesn't really it kind of holds it but it's still kind of loose so i found if you wrap it around again it holds it nicely and i think this hanging feature would will be better and then it opens wider too and i also made the tab bigger in this one because it's a bigger bag i was still using the small tab on my first version so this is going to be my latest version i actually am uh, maybe i'll do a video on that one later but for this one i found this material at Walmart and it's just a poplin material and it's 65% polyester 35% cotton and it comes like this and it's one yard 
And they have all like the cute, like I guess Disney and character designs and they all come like this, I guess so they don't, the Walmart people don't have to cut it. But it was cheap, it was like maybe six something. And I didn't realize, but it's such a good material for this. I think it's perfect. It's like very like sturdy and thick. So instead of doing a lined one, because I think the lined one, I mean, it's a trash can. It doesn't have to be fully lined, right? Like no one's gonna look on the inside. My first version is just a regular cotton material, but I did use interfacing, feasible interfacing. And I just left it like that because yeah, it's a trash can. Um, so no one's gonna be really looking on the inside. But yeah, so I was gonna do the line version. I decided not to because it makes it extra bulky, I feel like, and it's just not necessary. So, and then for one yard, you can do like two trash cans and have a lot extra too. Cause I already cut two pieces or trash can pieces and I still have all this left over. So I'll show you what I did. So I just folded it in half and this works really well. It's a 44, or for, I guess this one says 43 inch width, you know, from selvage to selvage. And I found if you folded it in half, like the whole thing, it's so easy to just get all your pieces cut. So this one, I will show you. I also write the, I guess the dimensions or the yeah dimensions of the pieces in the description but so this is cut on the fold so you'd fold the whole thing in half the 44 fold it in half and then cut 13 inches off one way and then cut a piece from the fold 14 inches and then you would cut your casing so there's a casing piece and also the strap piece and then it would be like this right so we just do and they're both four inches just to make it easy four inches by there this is 12 this is a strap so four by 12 and this one is for the casing and this is four by 13. so super easy just cut one one long one and then cut it into three pieces. And then for the tab, I'm doing a six inch square. Sorry, it's black, but from here to here, six inches by six inches. And that's all the material that you need. And then what else you're gonna need is two tape measures. So this is my tape measure that I've cut up and you need two of these. I just lost one. Okay, never mind. It was right underneath. But you need two of these, and this is 12 inch pieces. So, two 12 inch pieces. And then you need two buttons. So, I also found this at Walmart. Just whatever large buttons you want to use. And also some Velcro. And so, this is an iron on Velcro I also found at Walmart. It's one inch width and six feet really easy to put on you can use the adhesive dots too if you want I also have these old ones that I use for the first version that's held up fine so this is more heavy duty and more adjustable so this one just had the dots so it's only one and then only one like adjustable piece so in my car I kind of tied it in a knot but anyways this is better I used the tape and I ironed it on and then that way you know, you have some give. You can make it short, you can make it long, especially if you give this away for some reason. But yeah, you just have some like extra space. So that's all you need. Oh, and some electrical tape. I just have white. You can use any color, uh, whatever it won't show through your material. This is black, so it doesn't really matter, but I just have white and yeah, that's it. So I'll show you what i'm gonna do next with all these things on the side so just for time purposes i cut i did cut everything out and now we're going to iron i'm going to turn on my easy press mini 
And then while that's heating up, you can go ahead and cut your tape measure. And I already have this one prepped, but I'll show you what I do with this one. So it is very sharp at the edge. You're gonna wanna round it out. And be careful where these things fly because they'll be really sharp. Like one fell on the carpet and I stepped on it. It was pretty sore. When I was a little child, I naturally would see magic in the world around me. Okay, and then you just get your electrical tape. Electrical tape works good because it's really thick. If you have, if you don't have electrical tape, you can maybe double or triple up on some masking tape. So you just take a little piece like this and you're gonna stick it on one edge halfway and then fold it over. And it kind of just protects the edge so that it doesn't poke through your fabric eventually. So that's it. And then now that the iron's ready, I have it on the second heat setting. I'm going to get my straps first, I think. So I just got to find the shorter ones, strap and the tab right now. So we're going to fold it in half and iron it. It's a little bit longer than my easy press mat. So I'm going to turn it on the side. Okay, and then we're just going to fold the ends to the middle. And iron again. And then fold it again. And then for one side, you can decide which side you want to do. You're just going to fold it down about a quarter inch. Try to keep the ends on the side neat. Fold it together again. And iron one more time. I'm going to get a clip and just, or pin, and keep it together. It's kind of a lot of ironing in the beginning, but it saves you so much time from having to sew it and then turn out like a, you know, a tube inside out. I tried it that way the first time and it was not worth it. <laughs> For the tab, we're going to fold it in half this way and then fold it in half this way and then we're just going to kind of like origami it and fold it inwards like this. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do, um, as I said, I, I'm doing an online version for this one, and maybe I'll do a second video with the line version, because I do have another material I'm gonna use that is thinner. But for this Mickey Mouse one, I'd rather do an unlined. So we're gonna keep the iron on because we're gonna use it in a second. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a seam or sew with a seam allowance of a quarter of an inch this way on both sides, right sides to, or what do you call it? Right sides both facing up. And I'll use pins for this. And I feel, I feel like it's rare that you sew something with both sides facing up. But that's what we're gonna do. So since this is really simple, I'm just gonna sew it and then come back. Okay, so usually I would use black thread, but just so you guys could see, I used white thread and I sewed right across both sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then now I'm gonna top stitch the straps. So I'm gonna change the black thread and just sew top stitch like one eighth of an inch this way and then down on both sides. So I changed to my black thread and when I top stitch I like to move the needle over and use the center of the foot as my guide and you can do a bigger stitch like I'm going to do a three and a half stitch on my machine and just top stitch the top and the both the sides. Today just a little less mundane oh. I can stay inside and type away.
Okay, so next step, decide which side you want to be your front and which side you want to be your back. Uh, it's pretty much the same. So I guess I'll do this one for the back and then this one for the front. And we're going to use the iron now. So this is the part that you've sewn and it's just easy if you iron it up. Maybe I'll do the highest level so we can do this faster. Now this is the part where I'm just, you know, figuring it out myself. So if you find a better way to do this, then, you know, totally go ahead. So what I'm going to do is fold down one inch. That's why you could leave the selvage in here also, because you're not going to see that part. Okay, and then from here, you're going to fold it down again, just so that you cover the thread, because you don't want this one to stick out. And that you have a one and a quarter inch casing for your tape measure. Because if you figure the tape measure is three quarters of an inch, plus you're gonna top stitch and you wanna give yourself some leeway, um, one and a quarter works out perfectly. So just an iron back down. Okay, and because this is the front, we're gonna put in our tab. So we're gonna do that in the middle. If you want to make it easy for yourself, just fold it in half and then iron a seam. So the point of the tab goes right in the middle. And you're just going to tuck it in under here, maybe minimum quarter of an inch uh, and up to half an inch. You just want it to all connect when you do that top stitch up here. So that looks good. So now I'm going to pin it. Make sure you pin it through all the layers. Okay, and then sometimes I like to double check the ends because like this one looks a little thinner. I guess it's okay as long as it's one and a quarter inch. So now we're going to do the back side. So same thing, let's iron this raw edge up and then we're gonna fold down one inch and then fold down so that you get one and a quarter inch and covering that seam one and a quarter so now we're going to face or find the way the nice side of the straps and we're gonna do it right side up or nice side up. And we're gonna insert it two inches away from the edge and about half an inch up. And then we're gonna pin it. But same thing on the other side. So two inches from the edge with the nice side up and half an inch in. I also wanted to mention when I do my top stitch, I double, I go back and forth right here and over here, just in case you have something heavy in there, you will support it. But yeah, so I'm gonna go to the machine, sew this side and this side, just top stitch it and come back. Okay, so I have both sides sewn and now we're almost done. So now we're gonna do right sides together and just fold it in half. And we're only gonna sew down one side. Yeah, so we can pin it. We wanna make sure these this top area is flush. We're just gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. And if you wanna like zigzag it, you can. If you feel like this is a the material is gonna fray a lot, you can totally do that. Make sure the straps are inside and you don't sew over it. I'm just gonna do this seam and then come back. Okay, so I made that one seam right down the side. And to help you out, we can kind of turn it right side out. So for the snapping mechanism to work, the numbers need to be facing in. 
so it gets a little confusing so um, we can just do it right side out and when you look into the tube there is that extra material I always like to put it like along this edge if that makes sense so the extra material is by the number side so we're just gonna put that in same thing numbers facing the inside and I'm gonna have that extra material kind of protecting the inside so it's gonna go material tape measure extra material and then the outer material so push it all the way down as far as you can because we need the space to sew along the side and if you want to test you can just put it together and then Now we turn it right or right sides inside again. Flip it. That's just a good double check because you don't want to sew it and then have it be the tape measure be the wrong way. Okay, so push the tape measure all the way in because I think you'll probably break your needle if you sew over it and then make this side flush. And we're just going to do the same seam, quarter inch seam, all the way down. So I'm just going to sew it. Make sure the straps are on the inside and you're not sewing over it. And come back. Okay, the next step is to box out the corners. So you're going to reach inside. And then you can decide if you want the seams facing back. I usually do back. And then you're going to fold the corner in. So just make a little triangle, an even one down the middle, and it's totally up to you how much you want to box it out. I tend to do two inches so that you kind of have like a lot of space at the bottom, you know, if you have larger items in the trash can. So two inches, I'll pin right here. And to make it easier for yourself, you can also like clip on the side and that'll hold this flap flat for you to sew down. So we're going to do that on the other side too. So I'm just going to sew right down here and come back. Okay, so I've sewn down the two corners and it's up to you if you want to trim this and then maybe zigzag or serge at the end. I'm just going to leave it because I don't mind the extra bulk at the bottom. Ideally, you kind of want it to be flat. You can even put like a cardboard, like square, you can measure out a cardboard here and have it be, you know, more stable. So I'm just going to leave it and then turn it right side out. So just reach in, push out the corners. Okay, and then we're almost done. That was so fast and easy, right? So now we're just going to do the Velcro. Okay, so you have it flat down this way. I'm going to cut off five inches for both the soft part and the teeth part okay so this part is pretty self-explanatory you can choose which side you want to have the flat or the soft and rough I don't really know which one is like the right one and then it has a sticky bag so we're just gonna take that off and put it at the end it should fit perfectly. Okay. So it's going to go like this. Right? So now we're just going to take the iron and we're going to heat it. How many seconds does it say? Oh, 90 seconds. Okay, I probably did a minute. I didn't want to burn the material. Um, I'm going to let this cool and then we're going to test the stickiness. So let's do this side. Okay, that was about one minute. And the way you test it is pretty much try and take it off. So if it comes off easily, then you need to do it longer. 
and that's pretty good and it says to let it like cure for 24 hours before really you know taking it on and off something so it's still kind of hot but yeah it's pretty stuck on there so it's good i find that at the edges because the material is like four layers you have to really um, put extra heat at the edge so i just have these i bought it at walmart they have all kinds of different ones these are really cheap i don't know what i'm guessing white right? so i'm just gonna take two and depending on your bag take the bag put it in and then you want to fold it over the edge that way you make sure all the trash goes in the plastic and not on the outside of the bag so you can see if it reaches about right here that'll be perfect let's do three and a half inches i'm gonna just hand sew the button on and a half inches down right here okay so i have my needle and thread i'm just gonna open it up you can even mark it if that's easier for you go from the inside and just stick the needle through and then i'm gonna put the button on see it closes automatically so keep it open and then we're just gonna go in and out, in and out, and get this button on. Okay. And then I'm just gonna tie it off by sticking the needle through the material halfway. And then you wrap the side that is attached to the last stitch around the needle three times. And you're just gonna pull the needle through. And then I just kind of hook it onto somewhere and then cut it. So I'm going to re repeat this process for the other button and come back. Okay, so both buttons are on and we are done. I'm just going to stick the bag in again, fold it over. and wrap the end of the bag around twice. easy to make and we only need like I don't know half a yard of fabric so yeah we're all done and I hope you guys tried this bag out this has like solved all my car trash can problems seriously with just having it close shut on its own without the kids having to do an extra step has made really like all the difference and you can make these in like any pattern to match your car interior or something cute so that the kids will use it. Um, I'll take a photo of it in my actual car. I think because my kids are in like a booster and a high higher chair, it's like, I think they need their own. So I might just put these on both of the back seats. I don't know if that will look weird, but I'll take a photo anyway. And hopefully you guys try it. And if you do, let me know in the comments or on Instagram. Um, Please subscribe if you can, and I'll see you in my next video.